I witnessed this in real life. So I'm not going to get into all the details about the ring and everything, but when my husband was giving me my engagement ring, he took me to Black Angus. And we had a waitress that came over and I was showing her like, look, I got a ring. We're going to get married. And I was super excited because I didn't even expect getting a ring. And um, she's like, oh, that's cute. You guys are so young. You really think that you're going to get married? And she yes. starts talking about how she used to be young and have thoughts like that. And how she's been engaged to this guy and been engaged to that guy. And right now she was dating a guy and he popped the question or was talking about popping the question. I think that's what it was. He hadn't popped the question, but he was like, where are we with marriage? And she gave him a list. She was like, um, no. We're not going to get married. I want to have my own house. I want you to buy me a car. I want you to be able to take me to Paris. I want to be picked up in a limousine. The list was ridiculous. And I remember sitting there just thinking like, wait, she wants the life now. She wants the whole enchilada now. And that was, it's kind of, it's a little ridiculous. She was in her mid-20s. Anyway, 15 years later, my husband and I are back in that restaurant and um, our waitress comes over and we're like, oh, wow, she looks really familiar. Who's this woman? And uh, she says the same thing about us. She's like, you guys look really familiar. Do I know you? I feel like I've hung out with you. That I've talked to you before. Mm -hmm. And then I tell her, I go, I think you were here when I got my ring. And she looks and she goes, oh, yeah, I remember you too. Okay, so you guys made it. Like, you guys made it work. Oh, wow. That's really cool and stuff. And I ask her, I go, you know, when I was here last time, you were dating a guy and you would say his first name with his last name and everybody here in the restaurant would like say his name too. They all loved him. And she goes, oh yeah, I remember that guy. And I asked her, I said, what happened to him? And she goes, well, he worked on, I can't remember what she said he did. He worked on race car engines or something. I don't know. Um, I have no clue. Anyway, he did end up making three figures and was well off. He got married and he had a wife with two kids and he was taking her to like France and just living the dream that this waitress wanted to live. And she says something along the lines of, um, you know, I kind of missed the boat with that one. And um, I just wish I had known that he was going to do that. And now I'm with this other guy that's saying he's going to do the same thing. And she goes, I just don't Boy. have time for that. I need somebody to get their act together now. And I tell her, I go, well, he it's funny because if you stayed with the other guy, you would be his wife and you would be the one having the kids. And she goes, yeah, I know. And she starts tapping her pin on the menu and she sits there really quiet for a second and she yeah. goes, I, I think I'm going to give him a call. No, no, he's like, what? He's married. Why, why would you, why would you try to break up somebody else's stuff? Because you couldn't get your act together. Ma'am, you missed the boat. You can't give the boat a call once it's at sea. Leave that man alone. Stop trying to be a home wrecker. And I go, well, his wife is probably going to answer the phone. And she says, I think I'm going to friend him on Facebook. No. Why is it always, I'm looking for a man in finance, but it's never, let's talk about this right here. Every single month, my fiance, who is a certified financial planner, sits me down, prints me out an Excel of my aggregated credit card statements. He filters by shopping, food, and entertainment, presents it to me. We sit down, we have to chat about it. The way he eats me up every single time because what do you mean I spent $72.80 at Zara on March 3rd? eBay $92.54 on May 21st. The best is seeing like a foreign transaction fee of like $11.13 from an obscure vintage designer Prada bag coming from like Slovakia. I don't recall drinks with the girls being $136.10. Anyways, think about dating an engineer. That girl living oh. his life. Who's going to tell her? 
Comments like this are so funny because some of us grew up with immigrant parents who are not financially literate. Maybe if my dad did grow up in this country and had the privilege of being financially literate, I wouldn't have the spending habits like I do. So all jokes aside, I'm so thankful I have my man to do this all for me. Before I met him, I didn't even have a credit card. I didn't even know what my credit score was. Zero Roth IRA, zero investment. I would have had to have been working till I'm 95 like my parents are going to. And people saying like, you need to get your own money, and your own credit card, be independent. Girl, it is my own money. It is my own credit card. He does me the favor of going into my account every month and making sure it gets paid because I'm so ADHD, I would never pay it. And then he takes the extra money I have and then he goes and invests it for me. The whole point of the video was that it's like a very humbling experience mm -hmm. and it puts my spending in check. And because I did grow up with zero concept of saving and zero concept of money, I would probably be living on the streets right now. Well, most people will probably eat you up in the comments because it's oppression and it's a form of you need to go get your own bag. You need to do your own thing. You don't need to let a man tell you what to do. No, ma'am. You don't understand how a partnership works. And that's why you need to sit down somewhere and just be quiet. Learn something. You know. One of the most annoying little daily inconveniences for single women in cities is when you're walking and you see a beautiful man emerge in the street. You're checking him out and you scan him and you get to his feet. And sure enough, there's a golden doodle. No disappointment quite like that. It's so immediate. You get excited, you see a hot guy, and then boom, a doll. That tells you one of two things about this guy, and both are bad news. The first, that's not a single guy. That guy's walking his little dachshund or his little golden doodle back to his apartment that he shares in Tribeca with his girlfriend. Who's like really put together and always has a blowout. Or two, worse, single guy with a dog. The only ways on earth to turn a cute dog into bad news is you pair it with like a single guy in his 20s or 30s. You know the dog first becomes a tool to attract women in the street, so gross to corrupt the beautiful innocence and purity of a dog <laughs> with those gross intentions, which you know they have. And the dog also functions to distract from the guy's true nature. It becomes like an excuse to action. Cause it's like, how should I be if I keep this dog alive? You can't call me an ass cause I have this hug. I don't trust a single one of them. I think that's, uh lesson 101 and overthinking things if guys want to date a girl that they never have to worry about cheating or talking to other guys honestly just date a girl that works in a restaurant because all we do is work friday night working saturday night working my days off bed rotting because i'm too tired to do anything else because all i do is work <laughs> but we do make a lot of money so excuse me can I ask you something weird? What's that? <laughs> There's a guy behind the bar. I think yeah. he's a chef. Over there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has like a beard. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, there's still, there's still back in the it's coming it's in. Not for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know if he's single? <laughs> Can I leave my number? Yeah, come on. <laughs> no, you don't ask. I'm just leaving my number. And if he's not, then that's fine. All right, okay. I'll just put some paper. You know, I always wonder what these types of videos you're leaving your number but what if the man thinks that you're ugly what then like he's just going on a wing and a prayer that you're going to look good the pen died as i was writing this. <laughs> tell him my name yes <laughs> i was so embarrassed he's so beautiful though i'm not i'm not gonna show him because i don't know if he wants to be on camera i was doing a video and i got a text and from James and it said, can you pay the bills with your credit card? And I'm like, what? No. So I, I was like, I put the eyeball emoji like, cause this thing never happened before. And I was like, what in the world? James is gone bird box or something. <laughs> and so I, I said, um, dot, 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 I didn't answer. And so later on that day, after I'd done with all the stuff I need to do and go pick up the kids, I came back. I said, like, did you just ask me to pay bills with my credit card? He said, yeah, the one from my bank with your name on it. Because I had forgot that he got another bank account and put my name on a, uh, and gave me a credit card to his account. And I'm like, oh. she paid them bills. I guarantee you she paid them bills. So James was getting dusty for a second. I was like, exhale. Whew. She paid those bills. <laughs> She's just talking right he's, now. He's, and he, looked, he knew that I was thinking when I asked that, that he expected, uh, I, you know, he expected me to pay the bills. I'm like, he's like, did you think I mean with your, with your own money? And I was like, 
I thought that's what you was asking because you said my credit card. And he was like, oh, I know better than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I thought it was funny. The pick me men have got to get out of the apartment gyms. I was just in the apartment gym and I was doing my thing. Okay. I was 25 minutes into my lift. You know, I was doing like little baby curls and I was even going for like the lateral lunge, which I'm not that confident in. Three men walk in like kind of like 25 and I'm like, minding their business. Don't we know that the apartment gyms are for the girls? Yep. You heard that correctly. Apartment gyms are only for the girls. That is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard. I'm sorry. Do you own that building? No. Do you pay everyone's rent, including the fee for amenities that includes that gym? No. And why do people use an apartment gym? For a lot of people, it's time. It's just really convenient to use that gym. Others don't have the money to pay for a gym membership at a commercial gym. And some people have anxiety about going to busy commercial gyms in fear of running into somebody ignorant like yourself. <laughs> so they use the apartment gym at home to feel safe. Regardless, you have no right to tell anyone that lives in that building who can or can't use that gym. You need to do better. Mind your own business. Less than 1% of all tax filers reported an adjusted gross income exceeding $500,000. 1%. Oh, well, well, that's on them. Go ahead, Q. I was saying that's crazy because you'd rather be alone than yeah. lower your standards from yes. 500K a year. What that's are your other reason. standards? And lowering makes it sound like it was even a standard in the first place that made sense. It's stupid. Come off of it. Get down from there. They'd be so up in the clouds. <laughs> I mean, I so, don't want a short dude. I want, I mean, I okay. just want- how, how tall are you? Five, two, five, three. What's the minimum height for a guy? For me, what I like, I think six footer. <laughs> the lady in the left, the bottom left corner, look at her face. This is utter and complete foolishness. Taller, I guess. But that's like the basic. A lot of women are like that nowadays. So I think the average male height is like 5'9", 5'10". Like five, 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 so five, five, just, just on saying. the height metric, if you want a guy who's six feet and above, you've already reduced your pool to 15% of, of men. Exactly. Just just on the height metric. That's 15. Okay. What else? Um, I guess, I mean, not look. Are you talking about personality too? All well, right. So 500K, six feet and over. You said there were some other, that was just one of your standards. What are your other standards? Men are the problem. Men. Men leave. Are men trash? Men or men? It's because a man done did something to her. I don't think a lot of women when making videos like this are thinking long term. Yeah. You do realize your future daughters and sons are going to struggle with dating. Also, the fact that this content is even allowed is incredible in the most horrible way. We're not allowed to talk about women like this. Why are we allowed to talk about men like this? Exactly. And what a lot of people do not realize is these videos don't apply to the majority of men. They only apply to a tiny sliver. So why are we punishing all men for it? Men are trying to tell us something, but because we not are listening. in or have been in past relationships with males or boys, we haven't learned how to hear nor listen to a king that's right when he's communicating to us not speaking not talking but communicating there is a distinct difference between speaking and communicating men are trying to tell us they don't feel seen and heard men are trying to tell us that they don't feel important men are trying to tell us that they don't feel prioritized and men are screaming at us trying to communicate our lack of accountability they are screaming that we don't know how to say sorry but we don't hear them and don't care if to you either. find yourself immediately defensive or wanting to hop into my comments rather than to hop onto the phone and call the important men in your life to verify what i'm saying then you're probably the type of woman that they are referring to also if you do not have any important men in your life to call it's likely that you're getting your information which is miscommunication from other women. That's right. And that's part of the issue. That that's is right. not me throwing shade. That is me throwing perspective. I use myself as an example. I am fiercely independent. If you know me, you know I am the king, not queen, the king of independence. And I've been told 
once or twice All right. that I am too independent. Okay. And I used to believe it up until recently. I started doing some research, reflecting. The people who have told me that I'm too independent are actually codependent. We live two different lives. Independence and codependence are two very distinct things. And so we don't get to define one another as too much of anything because our lives are inherently different, right? So independence um, hasn't been my problem. However, how I've weaponized my independence Against is the issue. People. Now I'm accountable. I have no problem saying sorry. The men love, love, love my ability to apologize, reflect and be like, you know what? You're right. Accountability is not my issue, but weaponizing my independence has been. Mm -hmm. yeah. I use my independence as your ammunition yep. <laughs> to emasculate and invalidate men. And that's horrible. I have been communicated to that that is hurtful. Men have said it. Men have shown it. I know better. I've seen it in their eyes. I got all the information that I needed to do better and I didn't. Now, my issue was I've seen a lot and I know a lot. And I wasn't going to be that woman that you hurt like that. And so, unfortunately, I would harm before being harmed. I knew better. I didn't do better. And that's a lot of us. Now, if you know me well, you know that I'm not the relationship type. I do not wish to be in a relationship. I'm more comfortable just dating. And at this stage of my life, I don't even want to date. I just want to work on becoming a better me and become my own best friend. But it doesn't mean that I can't self-reflect and fix. It doesn't mean that I don't have enough information to pass on my experiences to, hope, to hopefully help other women. Please, if you learn anything from this video or if you learn anything from me, please let it be the fact that we shouldn't be allowing our Emotions. relationships with boys to impact the relationships that we're trying to have yep. with men. That's the key that I'm learning, right? And every time I learn something, I feel it's my duty to pay it forward and teach, right? That's what I want to contribute today. I hope that it helped you. I hope that you learned something. I hope you find this content inspiring and relatable. And I hope that you have a beautiful day. I think of a lot of women uh, that thought in this mindset of I'm strong and independent and I don't need a man would just come closer to the center, they would find you can keep your independence. That's fine. You have a business, you have a job. That's fine. Do your thing. But you hollering and screaming in my face how you're independent and you don't need me. That's a buzzkill. That's an, That's not an ego booster. That That's not the flex to a man that you think it is. And you're wondering why men are just turning around and walking away, not wanting to marry you, not wanting to have anything to do with you. That's part of the reason why. All right, you actually know what's coming next. Here we go. Selfie stick with mocha short five point thingy. Woo. So the other day I was telling this guy how stressed I was and like what I'm dealing with right now. Uh -huh. And his response to that was, how about I come over and you cook me dinner? <laughs> drizzle, drizzle. <laughs> I didn't even respond because I want to know how the f is me standing over a hot stove going to make me feel better? Stress relief is on. My phone before I jump through it and strangle you by your phone. So. Okay. All right. All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, y'all. So I woke up this morning. My tire was flat, bro. Bro, let me find out somebody popped my tire. Let me find out. I'm here by myself. I'm just a little girl. Anyways, nobody can come help me change my tire. So I have my homegirl Ruby. Let me use her phone number to make a cheese, but boom. Then five minutes of being on there, I get some matches. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? This one dude, he replied back instantly. He gave me his phone number. I call him. I'm like, hey, what up? I just now made that cheese, but the whole reason why I made it was I need somebody to come change my tire. So do you think you can come change my tire? Yeah, I can come change. Are you trying to kick it after that? I was like, yeah, Where's we can kick it. I was like, I got some lime Morello. Anyway, he on his way over here or whatever. And uh, I'm finna have a stranger on the dating app unchange my tire for free. And all I gotta do is drink some Modelo with him. Five minutes away. All right. That ain't gonna just be that. This is what the tire looking like. He's here. He brought me a Modelo. Get inside. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all, look. This is what the tire looking like. That I'm everything that is wrong with women these days. 
listen to what I what, what I'm really saying. Listen all the way through. So I a couple um, months ago, like, had lost my job, <clears throat> and I needed to borrow money from someone until I was able to pay them back. So I borrowed money from my man, right? All right. Um, at the time, I mean, at the time, and um. I kind of felt weird about that because he knew I really needed it and he never offered to give it to me. He waited until I asked and then I basically had to beg because he was, you know, well, asking those questions. So. I don't usually give money out, this whole thing. And it already gave me the ick. Like, literally when he said, like, I don't usually give money out, I was just like, okay. And I was just not fit to talk to him. Like, I was, obviously I was going to stop talking to him because after that, it's like. So you're going to stop talking to him after that. But if he gives you the money, you're going to take it, knowing that you're not going to want to have anything to do with him. This is the accountability that the world needs. If you don't want something from somebody and you don't want them coming after you, then critical thought and common sense would tell me, don't take anything that they're offering unless you absolutely need it. And even at that point in time, you would still pay it back. But I can see in your eyes, you're not trying to do that. If you know, I know you can help me. And if you don't want to, then we're having a little bit of a disconnect and I'm going to find a man who will. Like, it's not, it's not that deep. He's I was going to get mad. I was just going to, you know, stop talking to him. But then he decided he was going to give me the money, right? No, he wasn't going to give it to me. He was going to loan it to me. Whatever, cool. I said I would pay him back at the end of the month. The end of the month has come. Um, I kind of, I haven't, I've been thinking about it. I have a lot of things I need to get done and I'm still like really behind in bills because of the fact that I lost my job. So I'm trying to play catch up and I finally got a little bit of money, right? Um, so he texted me this morning and he's like, oh, has your check still not cleared yet? I haven't received the money, which already is a sassy like way of asking for the money back. Of course but it is. granted, he shouldn't have had to ask. I should have had, I should have just sent it to him. So anyways, I sent him the money, but the problem is right now, like, I kind of have the ick, and I don't want to talk to him anymore. If you don't give that man his money back? Am I everything that's wrong with women these days? Like, yes. Because he did nothing wrong, and he was actually very helpful. It was a lot of money, and a lot of men wouldn't have even, you know, loaned it to me, and he did, and I'm really grateful for that. And I think he's a great person. He's going to make whoever he ends up with very happy. Um, I just personally feel like he's not, like... I don't think that this is going to work. Like, not that I was expecting him. I don't know what I was expecting. Um, but for him to text me, like, I don't know. It just was like, just the fact of me giving him the money back is weird. Because, you know, I'm still kind of struggling. And I'm still kind of trying to get back on my feet after being, you know, laid off. Um, and so I could really use that. And he knows I could really use that. And he still asked for it back. Which he's well within his rights because we did have a deal. And he he upheld his side of the bargain. But I upheld and I did what I said. I. It's a lot of talking to say that I don't want to take accountability. It's a lot of talking to say that I'm looking, I'm fishing for validation of my opinion, even though in my heart of hearts, I'm telling myself right now, yeah, now that I'm talking about it, it sounds very stupid. And I should probably give that man his money back. We're probably not talking about 20 or 30 bucks here. We're probably talking about rent money, 1,000, 2,000, $3,000 for rent. And here you are, instead of looking for ways to give this man his money back, you're on TikTok. <laughs> you're on TikTok trashing a man who just came up off of two or three bands. What do we? Okay. Gave it to him immediately. No, you know. If you're going to use dating apps to date seriously, I beg of you to use your eyes and read. Because riddle me this. I just checked my hinge likes and got a like from this person who puts Christian in their profile and also made an extra point in their prompts to highlight that faith is important to them. Covering his picture, again, he highlights that he is Christian and he's looking for a long-term relationship. So why did he send me a like when this is my profile? Loud and clear for everyone to see, I do not believe in faith. I am anti-faith. Makes no sense to me and now I have a headache. Yeah, um, it's... When people tell, say stuff like this, it lets me know that they really don't have any self-awareness or look outside themselves. I can literally, I can literally tell you from experience, there are women out here looking for you and you look at their profile like, no, absolutely not. Like we don't even, did you even read my profile? So the fact that you sit up here and say that men do it, oh, men never read. Oh, men don't even pay attention. They just swipe. You can literally say the same thing for a lot of these women out here, because that's exactly what they're doing. You're not even reading my profile. Did you even read my profile when I said, I don't want your kids. I don't want anybody that's 60, 70 years old. I definitely don't want that. 
but you don't have any problem hitting me up talking about you're handsome. You look great. How about we get a drink? How about not, ma'am? You're a grandmother to me. I don't want that. Also, Let's go to the next clip. The bar is so unbelievably low. I have been on two dates, two dates with this man. He hasn't love bombed me. He right. hasn't tried to sleep with me. Right. And he hasn't forced me into a what are we conversation and tried to get me to be his girlfriend without even knowing my middle name. And That's I'm over here like, oh my God, I have a crush. Like, oh my God, like... <laughs> I'm on my phone with my sister after our second date and she's asking me how it went and I'm like, oh, it's so good. He's so cute. Like he asks me questions about myself and he actually listens. <laughs> You're telling me that he isn't an ass. He treats me with basic human decency and respect and he's showing genuine interest. And I'm over here like I won the lottery. <laughs> oh, I can't do it anymore. I really wish at some point in time a lot of these women that are saying stuff like this would realize that this is actually a backhanded compliment and it's not going to do you any favors. I know. With the way my dating life is going right now, I feel like I'm going to be single for a long time. Like a long time. <laughs> I literally just cannot stand. I cannot stand these vanilla ass men. You're boring. Mm -hmm. You don't intrigue me. And at this point, I'm like losing faith in all men. I just feel like they all want one thing. And if that's what you want, I'm the wrong thing. Go somewhere else. I cannot tell another man what I like to do on my free time. I can't do it. And I don't give my attention to anybody. And when I'm finally like, oh, like he's cute. Like, let me, let me talk to him. You're boring, you're boring. You suck. How do you think men feel when they're typically the ones pulling all of the weight and in response, they get one worded responses to our gaps in conversation and yep. zero initiation. Yep. The bottom line is that a lot of men today feel like it is pulling teeth to get to know a woman. So if you as a woman don't even want to talk about your hobbies, yet you're telling men that they're too vanilla, they're boring. I'm sorry, is he the only one that's supposed to bring joy and excitement to your life, but you don't provide anything back to him? Pretty much. So a lot of the men on here are mad about one of my videos where I said that Strong independent women stupid. get treated like crap and spoiled brats don't. And they're all commenting, well, I give a, I give an independent woman things and she throws it in my face. No, honey, you got it all backwards. We don't want you for your materialistic things or your money. Because at the end of the day, I can support myself. I can buy myself the things that I want. The only thing that you have to offer me is your time, your attention, and the way you treat me. So for the guys that are on there mad and commenting. I think that they think <laughs> talking like this is a flex and that men are actually going to like it. I actually did a little bit of research and looked at her TikTok, the video that she was actually talking about. And it was maybe like one or two dudes. <laughs> That's it. All of these men talking about it, it was like two dudes and there was like 27 comments. So <laughs> I don't know what she's complaining about. He must not be a very good man. <laughs> Where are all the black men? And I'm not talking about the scammers, the drug dealers, the robbers, and the, and the crooks, okay? I'm talking about the black men that literally just go to work, go to church, got a good relationship with their mom, just drive their cars, doesn't care about clothes and materialism, is focused on getting a good career. Where's that? Not the wannabe rappers. I'm trying to understand how come women don't get mad when women come on this app and talk about how men ain't nothing, ain't no good uh -huh. men out here. Yep. Nobody's saying, well, not all men. It's just some men. Don't generalize, right? We can say we can say how all men are bad. Yep. Women don't ever say uh, some or most. They just say, ain't no good men out here. All these men are cheaters. Men don't got this. No one ever talks about not generalizing with men, right? But when I speak about the things that are happening amongst black women and how we need to do better and what's really out here, they, I need to, I'm supposed to say some to fit your comfort. Mm-hmm. We can't pick and choose. As women, we want so much grace and we want people to coddle us. And it, it, it's, it not, it's not working. I mean, it's basically hypocritical, let's yep. be honest. But we're just so used to Society. dogging men out that when a woman like myself comes out and talks about what's happening out here, nobody can hear 
the true concern for us and wanting to see change. We just hear it as, oh, you're bashing. No, you. It, it's not bashing. It's speaking out about what's really happening and what's really going on. And if it doesn't apply to you, why don't you just let it go? Why would they? But again, for the men, we're just supposed to know that it's not all men when you speak about it. I've heard that saying. Make it make sense. I've heard that saying before. uh, If it don't apply, let it fly. Um, But then they'll get on here and they'll just start naming men in different shades. And it doesn't really matter what your race is. It's just the way they feel at the time. It's just the way they feel. And men have to get in line. Just let them say whatever they want. Talk reckless and just going about their day. You should, as the man, be emotionally fit, stable, and and mature enough to let me run my mouth and pop off at the mouth and say anything I don't want to say. But when it comes to me, take it easy. Be gentle. Be kind. I'm fragile. My ego, my feelings. How could I ever? I'm just a lady. I want this. I need that. No, ma'am. You have to understand that while, yes, men need to be a little bit softer, with the weaker vessel, with the weaker species, maybe you shouldn't put yourself in harm's way. It's like you see pit bulls, you see them, or any dog for that matter. You're walking into a yard that is not your own, and you're wondering why the dogs in that yard are protecting their space. And then you get mad, that dog had no reason to bite me. That dog had no reason to bark at me, he scared me. Well, you stepped on his, you, you stepped in his space. The area that he's charged to protect, you stepped on it and you tried not only to step on it, you tried to take dominion over it. What do you think that any animal that has any type of pride about what they're doing, any type of training instinctually is going to think they're not going to allow that. So why would you think in the real world when men have more common sense than that, you can just continue to slap them in the face, compliment them backhandedly. Oh, yeah, you know, that's the least you could have done with that. You know, that's bare minimum. I just took you out, paid it, paid for your date. I did all this stuff for you. What are you talking about right now? The least the least you could do is say thank you and go on about your day, even if you didn't like me. But they don't do that. Some some of these women don't do that. They don't like accountability. They don't like awareness. And they continue to treat men the way they want to treat men. And men are saying, you know what? I think I'll pass on that. And it's you women that are doing it. They want to continue to say whatever they want to say about a man. But if a man were to say that to them, oh, man, you hate women. You, you hate your mom. You you must be abusive. Come on, man. <laughs> but you know what? You guys get it. That's my opinion. Until the next video, I'm out.